Welcome to Oil & Gas. Today, we're gonna to talk about proportionate reduction clauses. These are clauses that are designed to reduce the compensation to a lessor if the lessor owns less than they said they did in the entire property. So maybe they said they had a one half mineral interest and it only turned out they had a quarter mineral interest. So to talk about this one, we're gonna talk about this important Texas Co versus Parks case, which is on page 605 in your book. Parks owned a one half mineral interest and Parks leases that undivided one half interest to Texas Co providing for $160 delay rentals, wasn't per acre, it was just $160, and providing that if lessor owns an interest in said land less than the entire fee simple estate, then the rentals shall be reduced proportionately. Okay, so Texas Co says, well, wait a second, they do own less than the entire fee simple estate. They only have an undivided one half interest. So instead of getting $160, you just get $80. Texas Co pays those $80 rentals, but the court cancels the lease. So why does the court cancel the lease? Well, the court says, well, wait a second. Did they really own less than the entire fee simple estate? I mean, they do have the entire fee simple estate in that uh, of that one half interest. So, you know, fee simple means you own it from here to the end of time, you can devise it, et cetera. And they do have that entire estate in that one half interest. Plus there seems to be a little bit of a flavor that like it seems a little bit shady to have put this $160 amount and then actually fine print means you only get to own 80, you only get $80 delay rentals. So as you know, what happens with delay rentals, you don't pay them accurately, you can lose them with an unless clause and that's what happened here. The court actually canceled the lease. Okay, so here's a typical Texas proportionate reduction clause. And I want you to think about whether this would have solved the problem. Okay, without impairment of lessee's rights under the warranty in event of failure of title, it is agreed that if lessor owns an interest in the oil, gas, or other hydrocarbons in or under said land, less than the entire fee simple estate, then the royalties and rentals to be paid shall be reduced proportionately. Failure of the lessee to reduce such rental paid or overpayment of rentals shall not impair right of lessee to reduce royalties. Okay, so if they own less than, uh, less than the entire fee in the hydrocarbons in and under said land. You know, you might wonder in and under said land, I mean, that sounds like you're saying 100% interest. Maybe by saying the entire fee, you're saying the 100% interest. Still, I think there's rooms for clarity about saying it has to be 100% interest in the acreage uh, actually described because otherwise, um, you know, the, you might see some wiggle room for the lessor to say, hey, you know, said land was just my one half uh, mineral interest. So there's some danger uh, about that. Now, certainly, you know, it would protect you if it turned out that, uh, you know, the problem in the Parks case was they said they were only leasing a one half mineral interest. Maybe if they had said they were leasing 100% mineral interest and it turned out they only own 50%, then you probably could have used the proportionate reduction clause to reduce delay rentals. Okay, so one application of the proportional reduction clause is when we might otherwise think that you would use the doing rule. So imagine that Olive owns a one half mineral interest and leases with a warranty. Okay, so she leases as though she has the full mineral interest, even though she only has a one half and she leases with a warranty. So in theory, you would think Duig should, should apply. But if you think about what would happen with Duig, it would get really harsh. Because what would that, what would that mean? 
Well, so let's say that Olive bargained for the normal one eighth royalty. What was the lessee, the oil and gas company, thinking they were going to get? They thought they were going to get a full seven eighths of production and just one eighth would go to Olive. So under Duig, they could take her full one half share of production and they could sue her for the other three eighths. So they could take four eighths of production, right? Because that's the, uh, you know, the one half, they thought that would, that would be all gone plus sue her for the other three eighths because they thought they were giving seven eighths and at most Olive can just give them one half. The other half goes to the other half mineral interest owner, the oil and gas company is gonna have to use an accounting with that mineral interest owner. So you see, you can get yourself, you could think under Duig, you get yourself into a lot of trouble. Now in practice, the courts have thought that result is too harsh. They think that landowners often lease their land, not really realizing there are mineral interest outstanding. In fact, the oil and gas companies should be the expert ones in leasing. And that's why oil and gas companies do spend a lot of time on the titles, making sure who owns what before they lease. And so as a result, they say, you know what? Courts say, in this case, the proportionate reduction clause is enough. So Olive lease for one half eighth royalty, claiming to own the whole thing. Well, she gets just a one sixteenth royalty. Her share is proportionately uh, reduced. There still may be some kind of warranty claim, um, but the her royalty is just reduced by proportionate reduction. Okay. By contrast, Dewey can apply a little bit more forcefully with Nash uh, with non-participating royalty interests. So imagine this case. Imagine Carlos owns 100% mineral interest, but owes a 1 16th non-participating royalty uh, that has been granted to another, uh, another party. Then leases with a warranty. In that case, Texas has said that NPRI, if you don't tell the oil and gas company about it, it's gonna come out of your share. So that's this old Texas case, Klein versus Humble Oil. And as we'll see, that can have pretty harsh results. So let's imagine this circumstance. Jones and Morales each own one half of the mineral interest in Black Acre. But Jones's half mineral interest is burdened by a 1 16th non-participating royalty that's held by Wynn. So Jones and Morales, each grant leases, describing Blackacre, they do, do a regular one eighth royalty and a proportionate reduction clause. So they describe Blackacre over, overall, not just their one half interest. So what happens with the proportionate reduction clause? That means each of them just gets their share of that well. So they each are just gonna get one sixteenth, okay? But how, who does, the lessee have to pay in this circumstance? Well, let's see. So we know the lessee assigned a one eighth lease, proportional reduction clause reduce, reduces Morales and Jones share each from one eighth to one sixteenth. So one sixteenth for both of them. But what about that one sixteenth non-participating royalty interest that was supposed to go to win? Well, because of that old Texas case that says the NPRI, if you don't tell the oil and gas company about it, it comes out of your royalty interest. Therefore, Wynn is gonna keep getting paid, of course. Wynn has this property right that can't be destroyed by the lease that's granted by Jones. And so Wynn is gonna get his full 16th. That likely means that Jones can't claim anything. So under Duig, Duig, said to the oil and gas company, look, if Jones just has a one half interest, he's just gonna get one half of the one eighth royalty, which is one sixteenth. But as it turns out that one sixteenth already has to go to win. And so following doing, we give priority to the granted instrument to the oil and gas company. And so one sixteenth from the one sixteenth that would go to Jones goes to win and Jones is likely left with nothing.